All right, yo, 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 it's your boy Yoshikid Neo. Oh, I gotta get used to... Cameras move from here to up there, uh, so it is a little bit of a different angle, but uh, it works. You get to see most of my board games right there without having to see a bunch of the clutter that I got right there, because I'm kind of blocking it. Maybe if I... There we go, now I'm really blocking it. So that's perfect, yeah, a nice little gaming backdrop. I like it. Anyway, uh, let's see, we skipped last uh, week because uh, I had some homework for my information security class that I was not getting completed. And what's funny is the next day uh, he sent out a thing. He's like, hey, so I messed up uh, in letting you guys know uh, something when you guys set up your server and this is why your shit's not working. And I was like, man, and now, and then it worked flawlessly. So that was kind of a bummer, but whatever, uh, got it done. Uh, last week, what we would have done is they are about to go into the cellar of Madam Will Awards estate. Inside of the cellar is a large, low, uh, I, I guess a large room that is dedicated to arts and things like that. Um, party's gonna have quite the encounter today. Uh, they're attempting to do a heist for Joker, one of their NPCs that they're working for. He's part of a criminal organization. They don't know which one, and I'm not gonna reveal it just in case they watch this video or anything like that uh, until it's applicable. But it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty neat, uh, especially. With what I have planned for today, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure the players are about to be surprised, so we'll see. <laughs> hey, if someone oh. casts Remove Curse on. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because I came back? I can mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't even think anyone has removed curse. I'm just saying, like any, it's not a high level spell. I don't think. Is it four? It's, yeah, I'm, it's either it's a three like or a fourth eight. level. Um, if that like just, I don't know if they're cursed or how they're back, but if a removed curse was cast on, uh, Angie, just dies. Noted. That's a pretty. And that'll be the end. <laughs> Did you say noted? <laughs> Remove curse. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hi, I guess he just cursed. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I'll make a, a GTA pedestrian death noise too. <laughs> it would be like <laughs> it would be drones, is what it would be like. <laughs> just... And make sure it's a random oh. NPC that does it. It's like, hey, you're not looking too well, huh? Let me help you out here. Yeah. <laughs> Puts on his wing, his <laughs> finger turns black. It's like, oh, here. <laughs> what if it turns nothing, out that cure wounds? Nothing. like Oh, what if it turns out cure wounds just hurts me instead of just doesn't work? Without holy magic, that's huge for our party. Oh shit, Mong will like that. <laughs> oh man, we have to deal with this whole thing. What whole thing? The heist. The fact that the person that is like running the heist can see me somehow. Oh yeah, I forgot all about that, dude. If and now where we left off? Wait. Yeah. So, uh, before we get into the recap, uh, we can go ahead and talk real quick, ping pong some ideas of potential uh, side gigs, side campaigns, if you will. Um, do you guys want to have these kind? Of, actually, let me let me do this instead. Let me bring us to the world map. The, the ideas I have are uh, essentially you could work either for, because I know uh, Kirsten was saying something about, you know, really wanting to be evil, like extremely evil, like really disgustingly evil. Uh, so obviously that is easy to do, especially if you guys work for like a demon lord or perhaps one of the many criminal syndicates in the world. Uh, those are both options. You could even maybe work at trying to overthrow one of the various empires that are in the world, uh, which would obviously put you in one of the different regions that you guys haven't been yet. Um, 
So th those are ideas that I have for the evil campaign uh, or an evil side campaign. Other things could be uh, like, you know, somewhat good aligned is working for one of the empires again, but trying to protect that empire. Uh, so that'll give you an idea of what their strife is that they're going through, especially with all the demon incursions and stuff that are happening around the world. Uh, you could also be a group of maybe treasure hunters or ruin finders, you know, like Tomb Raider or Indiana Jones style, and like literally just pick a spot on the map and be like, let's go to the crater of the moon, fuck it, what's there? And then we'll figure out what the fuck's there. I know what's there. <laughs> you guys don't know what's there. I want to go to the I moon. Do yeah, you, you wouldn't have mentioned it for no reason. <laughs> I mean, you're probably right. Uh, uh, I'm down for either. Uh, evil campaign would be kind of cool. Yeah, man. Like, just uh, <laughs> do some stuff where uh, we're literally just taking over towns. <laughs> For a, a greater power that's unbeknownst to what anybody else knows. I'm totally cool with murdering. Like, find a couple Karens. Murder, murdering and pillaging. We could be Karens. Just like go to the <laughs> store. Be super mean to the people. And then just give our, like... And then give kill out. them because our bagel wasn't cooked right or something give like an outrageous speech too is like but why are you doing this just be like because we seek a bigger fate or for society start a cult. man dude pull some coney stuff make some kids kill their parents if we do start yeah, this i know something wait what that's a good idea uh kirsten you're muted by the way i don't know if you know that she does <laughs> Wait, I, like, yeah. I like the idea of making my own army of child soldiers. So. I just want to raise the dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want oh. to do a necromancer character of some sort at some point. Damn it, that's Ooh. what I was going to do to my evil character. Ah! <laughs> be necromancer. I was going to bring back my boy. <laughs> I've seen a I've seen a fireball everybody and then bring them all back. I've seen <laughs> a special necromancer on there too. It was like a, a botan botan manter or some shit. Necrobotanist. It was like a plant based necromancer. <laughs> Looked interesting. interesting. But yeah, so those those are just some ideas, and obviously, uh, my the biggest thing is we can do we can do one of two ways. The original time that I tried to do the evil campaign. Uh, essentially, it was going to be, it was going to be like one or two sessions every couple months, like maybe after like a big thing or big reveal happened for the main party, we would port over to the evil characters, and then we would see what have the bad guys been kind of up to, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, we only got to do two of the sessions, um, but it was still, I think it was uh, very widely received and enjoyed to just you know kind of just dick around and be like eh, worst case scenario this character dies i just make a new evil guy because obviously negex is summoning us from the afterlife and she's like a powerful being anyway so whatever uh so if we do other otherwise like if we do a good campaign as well like obviously any actions good or evil um will have some sort of lasting effect on the world especially if you guys were to get your characters to that location later and be like so what's the deal around here oh well uh this fucking ed simmons guy fucking came over here and got fucking <laughs> sucker punched by a hag and died but somehow he was able to save us <laughs> had, to, had to mention ed couldn't it? Man? he uh, couldn't just let it go never. <laughs> Never, bruh. I wouldn't do you like that. I swear I need to, like, revamp that character and just bring him back. Watch him come back a straight-up G. <laughs> yeah. 
giraffe? Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so I want to be resurrected as a giraffe. As a giraffe? Giraffe, yes. Why? Now, we could do an awakened giraffe and do my idea, Brady. That is uh, very true. Another idea that Joe had brought up, and hear him out. Is uh, <laughs> it worries me. <laughs> is essentially well, has anybody yeah, you seen go ahead. the South Park Woodland Critter Christmas episode? No. I'm trying to remember what that was. Um, it's a bunch of sadistic little Christmas animals, and they're like are Satanists and. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. So I was thinking it. Like a one shot would be hilarious if like my the Snoopy's masters like if he had like a bad apprentice or a guy that's like trying to do his magic but for evil awakens a bunch of evil animals and we played all these awakened different animals and went and did evil things to give awakened creatures bad reps. <laughs> sounds like a Ooh, sounds like a non, that sounds like a non canon DLC. <laughs> what what a, what if DLC? That'd be hilarious. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that would be kind of funny and be pretty big implications for at least my character. Probably the party. So yeah, we could also run it like we could run it uh, if you guys wanted to be like, hey, what's uh, what's going on in this person's backstory, and we could all make, or I could have all of you make characters oh, yeah, that are be... based around that character's backstory, and you can either. We could either do it to where it's somewhat something of their past, or maybe it's something in the future that that character from their backstory is up to, and you guys go in and like do whatever, and now you've officially helped build some of somebody's backstory. So that that's another idea. I'll I kind of want to leave it up to you guys to let it brew in your brains and let me know what you want to do first, because the idea. I don't think uh, we'll do like a long term like hey you make this character and we'll play them every now and then it'll be more of like these are actual like one shots that take you know maybe two to three sessions to complete and then we're kind of done with that character uh, obviously there would be potential to play them again later maybe depending on how it all pans out but the the main idea would be to especially for uh, <clears throat> Gerald to get his uh, you know his fix on all the thousands of characters that he comes up with on the daily while he's taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be I really like the <laughs> idea of the um, background one because I, I don't know about everyone else, but like I have like a basic idea of what I want Maeve's background to be like and kind of like how I've been playing her. But I haven't like had the time or the opportunity to like fully suss it out. So I think that'd be really fun to play the backgrounds because then that would really reflect on how we play our main characters. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Is that not how we already do it? But uh, so like yeah. for me, Brady's kind of like historical do, characters. Like you like, know how Snoopy yeah. came from those pirates, the Scabberwags. Like we would do. Uh, one-off playing as the, the scabberwags. Yeah. Oh, instead of integrating it into the actual main campaign? I yeah, mean, it would still be integrated in a way. It would be impactful, like, at, like an explanation as to why they kind of maybe act the way they act now. Or, like, it would explain why Maeve is serving the goddesses that she's serving now. Because, like, I know why, but she hasn't told you guys why. So the whole thing we're playing new characters, but also developing our current character. I think that's a yeah. sweet idea if we can That's a really cool idea. And then evil campaigns murdering innocent people. Evil murder I'm cool with all that stuff. Yeah, I would love to to act like I'm doing good only to kill that person anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll protect you. Killer. Grab my hand. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Thought you had a friend. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Long live. Long All right, live. Mufasa. I, don't know. <laughs> I would totally make a human scar. Like. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. You can make scar. It's 
<laughs> oh, no. Brady's homebrew. He's got all sorts of shit. No, no, no. I want this. I want to make a. <laughs> There's a official content. Uh, a Leonin. It's a. That's like official D and D. It's not even yeah. homebrew anymore. It should be in, I believe, the uh, same book as Luxodon's. Yeah, shout out the, to Luxodon. Uh, well, really, Insider. It's the newest one. Um, that'd be really funny if we had someone make that because then we'd have a bird and a cat. So what would happen? Would the lion just chase the bird everywhere? Perhaps. Yeah, I low key almost just the whole time just started barking at O'Shea. Like I had a really <laughs> hard time not just doing that. Boy, that dog would have got the got the hands. Would have got that wing funny, that wing got attack hit really quick, really quick. <laughs> You would have got hit with that gust. Gust attack. <laughs> okay, Pidgey. Hit him, hit him with that tail whip. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. That I believe. That book is that's legit. Book. That's where the Luxodons came from, and technically Lionel's what? exist in that universe. The the newest book has the it's a Leon and. Uh, PC. Oh, okay. That must be. I don't. That'll be different from the Ravnica Magic: The Gathering yeah. stuff. But it's somewhat similar. They're cat people, lion people, yeah. lion folk. Oh, you. Yeah. They're cool. Um. One, and he has a Russian accent. Um. Are we? Are y'all? Are y'all still wanting to do the Halloween campaign? Or one off? Of course. Yes. Are, are you running it? Possibly. I didn't know about a Halloween. Campaign. Oh, then we ain't got to do it then. Right, oh no, 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 <clears throat> no, Joe. You, you, you go ahead and uh, rewind the chat, uh, like the past week. Nah, you, you busy, Joe. You ain't got to do that. <laughs> I, I'm up for it. The only problem is, is that. I apparently now have a baby shower to go to on that day. Dang, that's a... So yeah, I won't be able to start until later. You mean you have a baby shower that you are supposed to go to? Yeah. Hey, check this. Check one, two. Ingrid would kill me if I didn't go, so... We don't have to do it on the 26th. We can do it on the 27th. And then there's or the not shower. at all. You scared? Oh, you mean we're not going to do it on actual Halloween? Uh... Isn't that when the baby shower is? Yeah. Because oh. that's what I thought we were going to be doing the Halloween one shot. But if we're doing it on the 26th or 27th, then that's fine. I'm free. Is Ingrid a part of this baby shower? Yeah, it's for Brit. Oh. Then fuck. You know what? Kirsten's not invited. This will be a boys' night. <laughs> yeah, girls are loud. Holy shit. Freaks come right. out at night. Bye. What? What? Freaks come out at night. Yeah. Where'd she go? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice dicks, dramatic dicks, flair. Dicks, I love dicks. it. <laughs> <laughs> no need to make it gay. <laughs> Circle jerk. Circle oh, jerk. Is, is this not what we're doing? No, I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> Can I leave again? What are we talking about? Boys <laughs> not out. Let's go. <laughs> 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 Now, my idea was that we would do it on the normal session just because uh, more than likely Ingrid's going to want to do something on Halloween. Oh, okay. That's fine then. And since the uh, the baby shower is only from 2 to 4, which means 2 to 6. No, it's a baby shower, so it should only run like an hour or two. Oh, well, yeah. So, I mean, I can talk to her and see. If she has any plans for us, but I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be going to a Halloween party. Oh, well, knowing Ingrid, she probably already has made plans for us. Or at least for you guys. I don't know about me. Nah, well, well now you're dr getting dragged into it. If I have to go, you have to go. What? And, th and then we can talk about D&D <laughs> the whole time. So That's yeah, not more cool. I have a list of horror movies I want to watch on Netflix. Fine. Uh, but Gerald, if you, <laughs> if you want, we can either... We can either do it next uh, Monday or Tuesday or even the following week if you want extra time to prep. Bro, I got to I gotta prep prep because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that's fine. So, I have yeah. a premise, but I just... 
That's yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 So as he starts this starts this session out, like, oh my god, this is trash. This is trash, Jerry. Nah, bro. It, it, pro it probably might be. Like, just <laughs> have no expectations. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. No one's I'm... gonna be mad even if it turns out like shit. We're... Yeah, it's still D and D. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah we... My expectations are super high. Yeah, D and D is all about like winging it. All I know is that I get to play Nietzsche. Woo! Yeah, I'm trying to... Of course, <laughs> I've got to de-level him a little bit and uh, take away some gold that I've gotten from my honey pop sales. But other than that, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah, so I'm going to make a... I gotta, I'm going to make the black guy. Bro, I just... Ne <laughs> now I got, a cam I got the campaign idea. Beautiful. So yeah, well, uh... We'll run that. You want two weeks? You want to do it on the second? Bro, well, give me about two months. Two months? What level of character are you thinking we should come in at? <laughs> <laughs> right. Level 18? Do Say less. Want, hey, do you want for real two months until you do a uh, one shot, Gerald? A one shot for Halloween? All right, y'all. This, <laughs> this, this is the one shot on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Halloween special. <laughs> Uh, you let me know. Uh, if, oh, if, bro, if you... do Nightmare Before Christmas. Bro. Hey, there I'm not go. here thinking. So I'm using my brain. Krampus is the best. Fuck yeah. Santa Claus. So how about, how, about, how about this then? Uh, Gerald, you will run a Nightmare Before Christmas on around the Christmas area. One shot. And uh, I'll dig up some stuff to do a Halloween one shot. It probably, I could probably have it, I should be able to have it ready by next Monday. If not Monday, I can have it next Tuesday. All right, well, let's, I'm going to shoot for the Halloween joint, and then we'll, we'll talk, like, tomorrow or something okay. more seriously about it. Yeah. So, uh, I'll be prepared. If you guys ever want, I don't really care. All right, Joe, Yay! next week, we need you to be ready with the one shot. Uh, okay. Expected to take I eight can... hours, so get to prep. I, can do that. <laughs> yeah, I know you can. He Bro, said nonchalantly. Just like, oh, man, this is easy. I'm over here stressing out. For a fact that you could do a one shot right now, an eight hour one shot right now. Who could? You. Oh, um, actually, hold on, let me see. It's what we who are unprepared shot? because we don't have the characters, unless we use past characters. Yeah, you could do that. You know it would be fun to really fight? Where is it? Oh, you remember this guy? Oh, I should probably get on. Oops. Ooh, we could we could yeah, fight him again. That'd take eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, that when... picture alone, that's eight hours. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> remember when he killed Lacan? Your 22, 23 AC fighter? <laughs> Everybody... Everybody killed oh. Lacan. You said there's a. But not. Uh, so, honestly, Joe, if you want to run it next week. Ooh, I don't know. Or the week after. Maybe. Uh, I'll think about it after this. It dep I might be actually really busy this week. This is probably like literally the worst. <laughs> All right. I'll, <laughs> we're, we're I'll... doing the build phase of the thing that i'm oh uh, gotcha yeah that you're work. in charge of that makes sense mm -hmm. in that case <laughs> uh we can plan on me running it with gerald being a hard maybe since he seems <laughs> to be nervous for whatever reason that is shit hard bro i just don't want it to be ass uh, hey so we'll shoot for the halloween special to be on the second so that's not next week but the week after that way if gerald does want to do it uh or you know comes to gripes with it uh then he'll have two weeks to prep um and if not then i have two weeks to prep your nightmare so Ooh, do i still have nightmare I'm trying to see what i have in roll 20 <gasps> set up i do go I bet uh where'd it go damn it I'm trying to get this token it's not working for whatever reason 
wanna I wanna see if uh yes. there he is. You remember this guy? Uh Kirsten? Oh, she's not even in the. Yeah, fucking... she's not logged in. I just opened it. Pull it back up. It took forever for Foundry to load. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm trying to remember. So I remember you legit, like, muted yourself to the point of you couldn't hear me given the descriptions of what he was doing. <laughs> Wasn't that, that the was guy that was ripping eyeballs three. out? He wasn't ripping them out, he was inserting, uh... Like a tool? He, he was essentially doing ice pick lobotomies on people, making their eyes explode and extract... Yeah, them okay, I remember that, bitch. He's gross. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now that we've dicked around for 40 minutes... <laughs> let's get started. Uh, <clears throat> so last time we left our heroes, uh, you guys had completed a uh, skill challenge successfully, uh, even though I ran it completely wrong. Yeah. So I apologize about that. But now now I know uh, that the skill challenge rules are everybody can use any skill that they're proficient with, but that character can only use it once per skill challenge, which means that, yeah, you can use all your best skills and stuff, but you got to be creative with it because um, some skills, you know, don't really have a way of getting used unless you have the imagination to bring it to life. Uh, but regardless, you all were successful in completing the skill challenge. You all were successful in getting inside of the Willow Ward estate as people were starting to gather. And um, as, you, as you all started to uh, get gathered into the main foyer, with the servants giving out uh, hors d'oeuvres and drinks and things like that. You... Actually, was Snoopy under greater invisibility or just regular invisibility from his eye? Regular. Okay. Uh, so Snoopy um, has found the entrance to the cellar, which is where he also saw some guards uh, taking some, some sort of covered rectangular piece out from the cellar uh, and we'll say for because of my lack of memory that as the rest of you had walked in you see these guards moving away from there as well and you immediately gauge that that is the location that you most likely need to go Something different. Uh, so as you wait for um you know everything to go on uh madam willow ward ended up coming up to mave and essentially talking about how she can't wait to make the connection between her house and the bosun household um, or at least the families uh whatever that means it is also the uh the way that mave got o'Shea and monguzu who currently looks like quinn inside of the estate uh, I believe Angelica is literally trapped inside of the uh, the napkin still, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, sitting, sitting cross leg, just chilling. Yeah, he's just like, when the fuck are y'all gonna get me out of here? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but eventually, uh, Madam Willow Ward starts to beckon everybody to come into uh, one of the side chambers, which gives you guys a opening. To go downstairs uh, and that is where we will start today's session is as everybody's moving from the main foyer into one of the grand halls uh, what is everybody doing and uh, <clears throat> just because of making it way easier uh, Mong uh, turns to you guys and goes I'll just stay up here and make sure to uh, keep a low profile and make sure you guys are good to go. Uh, what's our safe word? Uh, O'Shea makes the little duck noise. <laughs> Realized I didn't have my soundboard open. I'm prepared. My bad. 
he's like he he kind of looks at you and then he goes <clears throat> Like that? Why, why was it so low? <laughs> was it low? <laughs> yeah, like, it was really quiet. It was like, <laughs> so soft. <laughs> but that happened though. It's the ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> I know what happened because I have the. I don't have. Me about to play that. Yeah, like you hear that? Music. I heard that. <laughs> like... <laughs> you ain't slick, <laughs> There you go. Strahd comes out of a portal. <laughs> Quacks and <then> leaves. <laughs> I just realized because I've got a new microphone, I don't have the sound settings on my thing. Change this real fast. You're probably about to hear me double. Hello, Hello test, test one, two. two. Yep. Uh huh. See, si, senor. You sound like a robot. Did you hear me now? Ooh, you sound like you're in a disembodied thing. voice. All right, all right, sounds good. Nice, I'm like Kylo oh. Ren. That was the God of Death voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. And now the main event. Need <laughs> And the now, first time when you did the pixie, I died. I could not hold it together. <laughs> oh, what's the pixie? The help? It was. He did like this really high pitched voice, and I couldn't get over that it was Brady. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Girl, you fucking piece of shit. Did you know that major cunts and cunts are mates? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. it. <laughs> they should totally <laughs> make. You should totally make a pixie that comes back with a vengeance. It's just throwing up gang signs. A <laughs> pixie? A gang a pixie. I know what you did to my people. We, we could do that. that. You sons Brady, of quote the godfather. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on, say. I show you. <laughs> uh, so Monguzu kind of uh, nods at you and goes, okay, I got the signal. Uh... If anything happens, then I'll I'll do that. Uh, walks off with the crowd, and he grabs a couple of a uh, couple of hors d'oeuvres and starts to munch on them. And he looks over at you guys, winks, and gives a thumbs up. That's probably not a great idea. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the boy. Is there a place where I can like fly up and like? Like just perch myself. Uh, technically yes. Uh, so the grand foyer above it, you know, the second story, there's sort of like an overhang balcony kind of thing. Uh, that is like the landing for the second floor, or it then has a second additional set of stairs that go up to the third floor which has the same overhang so imagine yourself in the grand foyer and when you look up you can see two balconies that are opposite sides of each other and those are the you know the landings for the upper uh upper stories of this estate um is there a guard like near me or something like oh somebody... yeah uh so i'm gonna go to the guard uh excuse me sir first and foremost all praise be to Illmater. I hand him a pamphlet. <laughs> and you hold it out and the guard uh, kind of looks at you and then looks at the pamphlet and says, uh, the just thing. Go ahead and put that away. No one wants your. Oh, no, no, it's a, it's, it's okay. This is for you. I don't need any. I have, I have plenty. Uh, is there a rule? about uh is can i f like can we fly here or i know there's no magic allowed but like this isn't magic that's right it's not magic but uh let me ask you this question is this your house um is it yours no but i got the estate and i know very well that 
Madame Willow Ward and the rest of the Willow Wards would not want you perusing their private quarters. All guests um, are to remain on the first floor only. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, well... If you need right, to stretch your wings, to he points uh, to the front door. There, you may fly at your behest. And, uh, word of warning. Our boys are really good at, uh, pigeons, so just keep that in mind if you try anything. So I can go out there and stretch my wings. I'm I'm confused because it sounds like I'll get shot. Get shot if you try to land on any of the balconies of the upper floors. Yes. Mm. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I turn to Maeve. I I guess I can't stretch my wings for real. So uh, I'll find somewhere with a good vantage point. That's Let's okay. Keep it on. Uh, I will, I guess, go and do what Lady Willow Ward tasked me with to go find the dog. And I say that with, like, a wink at O'Shea. <laughs> uh, um, so what is it? I don't know what, it, if there's a certain name for it, but, like, you kind of see oh, O'Shea sp spread his wing, one of his wings out and kind of, like, you know, tend to his feathers and stuff like that. Oh, so you're like cleaning yourself essentially? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. Yeah, um, so you start to do that, and one of the guards kind of like tilts his head. Uh, excuse me, sir, is that quite necessary here? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not flying. No, Am but I? is it 100% necessary for you to be rude in front of all our esteemed guests? Um, I stop what I'm doing and, like, look around. Am I, like, making a scene right now? No, no. Like, there's a couple folks that, as they're still moving to the, the Grand Hall, um, in the other room, that they're kind of looking back and kind of chuckling at you. Uh, go ahead and roll Perception Check. So as you look around, you can see some people like looking your way and kind of scoffing and then talking under their breath while glancing back and forth between who they're talking to and you. Uh, you can't read their lips or anything like that. Uh, you can't hear what they're saying. There's too much, um, too much white noise from uh, all the footsteps and things like that. But you can definitely tell that they're more than likely talking down on you uh, privately. <clears throat> Sir, I'm not okay. sure your background, and I do apologize, but that is very, very rude to do in such a esteemed location. I suggest uh, this My next apologies, time... guard. I haven't... Uh, he's new, so I haven't had enough time to train him in our ways and how to serve our families correctly. It won't happen again. <clears throat> I would see to it that it doesn't, unless you do not wish to be invited to any more parties by Madame Willowood. That would Heaven be forbid. quite a shame. Uh, I turned to O'Shea and I'm just like, just either come with me or just stand here and watch Mong. Don't do anything. Don't talk to anyone if you can avoid it. Because people will know. <laughs> Remember, we're trying to stay inconspicuous. <laughs> mm. I was only doing what comes natural, but okay. Um, so O'Shea just make O'Shea's gonna go with you now, and uh, before he leaves, I'm sorry about the mess. Uh, please forgive me, and I just set down a pamphlet by him. Just in case you ever get time to read this, just <laughs> please do that. He kind of sighs and he takes it and starts to look it over real quick. And then you see him with a surprised look. Oh. Man, just kind of shakes her head. <laughs> boy. I think I think you'll like page three. 
and then he leaves. <laughs> All right, so uh, as Mong gets sort of, uh, he starts to get nestled into the middle of the crowd um, to the point where you know where he's at, but you can't quite see him because of how many people are there. Uh, but you can see the ponytail that, you know, Quinn was sporting, um, sort of like, not really uh, distinctively, but like every now and then you catch a glimpse of it in the middle of the crowd. Cool. Angie, what are you doing? I'm still inside the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> Can I like use this time like while I'm in his napkin to just like meditate? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. On on death? Yeah, just meditate and think about everything that's happened to me thus far. Open up okay. the hole and he decides to kill him. Well, this is kind of bleak, don't you think, Angelica? Hello, Lid. Why, hello. I hope you don't mind me intruding on your thoughts just a, a bit. I was just wanting to get a gander as to what you and Monguzu were up to. He seems to be having a party, and you're here in complete and utter darkness. Maybe it's best for me. To be in complete, utter darkness. Just for a moment. You got something way on your, on your mind, I take it? Perhaps, maybe, maybe talking about it could help you out. I wouldn't say that I'm a therapist per se, but I want to be a friend. I hope you can see that. I really do. Well, I mean, I've already put your life in my life into your hands at this point, so I have no choice. Why, literally. <laughs> right. Sorry, right, well, probably a little too soon for jokes. Yes, actually, not that bad. I'm actually digging it. Just uh, oh. wanted to test out this uh, this body of mine now. Well, it should, uh, should hold up a lot easier in a pinch, but I wouldn't rely on it too hard. Granted, death does not come to you very easily either. Nor does life, though. Keep that in mind. Hmm. You got a point. Hey, uh, are there any, like, since my life is under your control, is there any way you can give me, like, any upgrades? Upgrades? You mean yeah. modifications of sorts? Yeah. Like something like give a quick boost in my power. I'll be honest, I've not really dabbled in that portion of necromantic magics, but I've got a few books and I've got a few acquaintances across the lands that I could probably take a gander at. But, uh, fair warning. The more that you rely on this undead power, for whatever it's worth, the more you lose yourself. Keep that in mind. Have you ever seen a zombie before? And I already know the answer is yes, because I put some in my crypt for you to fight. Right. What if I told you that when they start out, they start out exactly as if they had never died? Uh... I'll let you do the math, even though I can tell that you're not quite the intelligent sort, but, you know, one plus one is two, after all. Eh, uh, yeah. Well, man, what my ma and da would do this if they saw me like this. Well, man. more than likely, I would think they'd be somewhat appreciative that their little girl, well, I say little is an arbitrary term. Yeah. Is still around instead of being just an afterthought. Yeah. Maybe it'll be better sooner rather than later for me to go visit them eventually. Is there something that you're looking for in your family specifically? Perhaps something that I may be able to guide you to? In all honesty. I've been gone from them for so long. Honestly, it would be good for them to have closure that I'm still somewhat okay. 
Well, and, uh, I can send them some sort of letter, things like that. Quite simple. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you did. But, yeah, I don't know. A little too soon to, uh, uh, think about the future, especially since this whole thing just happened. So I guess we'll see what happens, uh, I don't know. I'll say a week from now. Very true, very true. Well, I'll let you get back to your business. It seems like you're having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, appreciate Obviously. you for checking on me, Lid. Oh, yes. I always make sure that my <clears throat> servants are well kept. Eventually, I don't wish you to think of it as that, though. Perhaps yeah. maybe if you are able to find a way to resurrect your body permanently without the necromantic magic that I have employed. Maybe you could get your true form back. But I'll tell you, I'll be honest, I have not looked into anything like that, as it has not really benefited me in the past, and I do not see it benefiting me in the future. Nerd. But I would be willing to let you go. After all, your soul is binded to this undead form of yours, which, if, as time progresses, more than likely will see some of the after effects of death. Yeah. Why well, I said I need to get stuff done now than later. Correct. I have a feeling I'm going to start rotting. I do recommend a warm bath every now and then. Sort of helps to de-escalate the narcosis and the rot. All right. But as time progresses, it is inevitable. Keep that in mind. Manguzu is a different sort because of his innate abilities, but well, you you were flesh and blood all from the beginning. You don't have these shape-shifting characteristics, unfortunately. Well, I'll keep note of that. Warm baths, and don't rely too much on my undead latency. Got Not that. Unless you wish to lose your mind, and I do mean to lose it. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, now uh, you got me a little scared, but uh, I'll get over it. Fear keeps you alive, remember that, and I'll leave you to it. Goodbye, Angelica. See you around, Lid. And as instantly as he came, he is gone. At least you assume he's gone. You didn't feel anything. You didn't feel his presence. You didn't feel anything uh, like anything was watching you. Kind of like that sense that everybody gets. Uh, just like the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you heard was his voice pop in randomly. All right. Well, back to the darkness I go. And I just close my eyes again and just start meditating. Okay. Then while he's doing that, uh, what is Snoopy up to? <clears throat> Let's see. So, I know where I'm going, and I'm going to try and get in there. Alright. Easy enough. I mean, you are invisible, and as the as you notice that uh, the clock does strike 6.30, um, you start to you look around at your surroundings. Obviously, no one's looking that way. All the guards are kind of... Uh, they're posted at the stairwells and at the main entrance but they're not really paying attention to anybody they're kind of doing their own thing uh you notice that they're not even paying attention to your group uh who are st still standing in the middle of the foyer 
Uh, they seem to have their sights fixated more on the larger crowd, and they don't care about your teammates for whatever reason. That's good and bad. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'll take advantage of their hopefully ineptitude and uh, stroll into the room with all the goodies. Okay. So as you start to walk down the cobblestone staircase, um, you end up getting to... Uh, you go down about a story, uh, which I believe is standard 10 feet or so. Um, and you come to this sort of cobblestone landing uh, that has two doors. So as you come down the stairs, there's a wall in, like directly in front of you. And then it's like a sort of elongated hallway, but it's not super, like it's probably 10 feet, uh, 10 feet by 5 feet with two doors on either side. One of them you can see has a uh, has a torch lit on the outside of it and is partially cracked open. And the other one you can see has sort of a um, like a bunch of I guess iron bars sort of blocking uh, anyone from opening it. Okay. Um, can I have my little eye of Dendalion pop out and? Will it remain invisible? Question. Uh, we'll say for now, yes, it will. I'll okay. do. I'll do some research and see, because I'm pretty sure invisibility, anything that you currently have on you, stays invisible. But if it leaves your person, it becomes visible. Yeah. yeah, I can see definitely see arguments for either for when either. it leaves, new becomes invisible visible or it comes visible so um i would assume that when you attune to it you find that stuff out but yeah. um for now that it is going to stay invisible can i have that go and like can it sneak into the room that sure can of... what do so I... yeah the eye is behind your eye patch right yes well your mage hand not... Not now. When I use it, I flip the eye patch up. Okay. <clears throat> so the eye patch is flicked up, and as you uh, come around the corner and start looking around, uh, you concentrate on the eyeball and say, "Hey, go check that thing out." And you can feel it, like you can feel the pressure around your eye socket as it starts to bulge out, and you feel these four little blood vessels like sort of uh crawl out of the eye socket and push itself to where the eyeball sort of like ejects itself from your skull and it kind of does a flip and then it lands with a like nice little like squishy sound and you can see the the four little uh blood vessels that it uses as legs uh start to walk towards the uh door as it's doing that the eyeball is sort of cradled in this uh this, what is it called? This, in, not invisible, this uh, clear goo, this clear mucus. So the eyeball is able to essentially like uh, rotate like 360 degrees in all directions. So it's just looking at everything uh, as it's moving. And as it crawls to the side, it peeks in, it looks up and down. And uh, I believe you're able to essentially like find a familiar spell, see through it. Yeah. So, uh, as you go to see through its senses, um, on the other side, you can see in the center of this room, there's this giant golden statue of a horse. And there are these floating lanterns that, that seem to be magical in some way because they're not suspended by any type of rope or chain. They're just floating freely about 10 feet above the ground uh, in the middle of this sort of open uh, square room. All along the walls, you see various types of decoration. Most notably paintings, uh, suits of armor, um, weapons that look to be uh, either encrusted with rare minerals or used with uh, uh, rare metals and things like that. 
Um, but that's just what you see from the door. Okay. Um, I'll have the eyeball come back and nestle back into my socket, and then I'll uh, sneak into that room. Okay. The eyeball comes back in, and it sort of, it puts its tendrils inside of your socket, kind of grips the uh, surrounding portion, and pulls itself back in. And you can feel it spinning rapidly um, as it gets sort of comfortable, and then it finally fixates uh, normally. And then as you start to blink and look around, you can tell that it is integrated back with your body um, to where it's under your control. And as you, you start know... to... Lady, I'm so sorry. That was a fantastic description. But right after it gets in, Snoopy is going to decide, you know what? I'm going to leave the eyeball on the outside of this door to keep an eye out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it gets nestled, and then you're like, wait a second. And then it pops back out doing the same sort of <laughs> maneuver that it did before. And it sits right there, uh, sort of in between the doorway um, and the room and the hallway. And it just keeps an eye out. And every now and then you peer into its uh, vision just to see, to make sure it's in a good location. And I'm pretty sure it can, pretty sure it can send you like uh, thoughts and stuff like that. I've, I thought so. Yeah, so, yeah, you can communicate with it telepathically, so. And it, it it's not that it has a voice or anything, but, like, it, it's almost as if whatever it's thinking, now you're all of a sudden thinking, and you've started to get used to it. Uh, it's a little weird that all of a sudden you're like, oh, hey, there's a guard out there. Oh, there's a guard out there. And, you know, not, that's not what's yeah. happening right now, but that's essentially how it feels. Um... So you leave the eye there, the eye is looking uh, down the hallway, and as of right now, the coast is clear. And you are able to open up the door a little bit, walk inside, and you just see the most beautiful, like, illustrious artwork all around the room. Paintings on paintings on paintings. Uh, and as you look, you can tell that some of the smaller paintings are probably, you know, just little, little small uh, things that the Will Awards have acquired. But you can tell because of the placement and because of the excess lighting on the larger rectangular paintings, uh, you know exactly what the centerpiece of this room is. And there are eight of them, two on each of the four walls. As you're walking and sort of taking a look at all this stuff, uh, as you're walking on sort of the, the marble flooring, you end up touching this nice, like, uh, silky smooth cloth. And you look down and it's this large carpet um, that has the most beautiful coloring coloration that you've ever seen in uh, something like this before. There's okay. also a bunch of uh, suits of armor that look to be, they look to be uh, crafted from times long ago. And then sort of, because, and the reason you think that is because of the fact that you've never seen this style of armor before. And being a pirate and having sailed to pretty much, I'm pretty sure the Scabberwags would have gone to almost every location uh in the continents around so you've seen your fair share of different styles of armor based on regions and you've never seen anything like this this almost looks impractical uh to a point that you can tell that it was made in more ancient times but it has recently been restored to look like this really beautiful armor that some sort of royalty would probably wear uh just as a show of their riches and their power I don't think I'm in the right spot. I'm going to leave the room. <laughs> um, all right. So I will take out a napkin and throw it down so my friend Angie can join the battle. Toss the napkin. Angelica, all of a sudden, you can feel this sort of uh, this gust of air. And as this gust of air hits, you instinctively look up as there is now light. 
and right above you, you see Snoopy sitting there with a empty eye socket wagging his tail. Uh, and he's, you know, got his tongue hanging out. Um, I hate to be this guy, but no, he doesn't. Almost, what is Snoopy? He's invisible. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. You know, he can, he knows that that's exactly what is there, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I look up, I, I look up, and then, uh, get up. Say, I'm, Angie, I'm right here. Gotta be quiet. Let's get this done. Uh, I'll start uh, with, I, I can only lift 10 pounds. <laughs> I'll, I'll try lifting as much as I can. Or should we destroy some of it? I think we should steal it. Let's steal it. I, uh, <laughs> I hop up and jump out the hole. Okay. Let me see. And like I adjust my gloves oh. and, and roll my oh, neck. Oh, so this this horsey statue is really big. Yeah. Just so uh, Gerald and Kirsten are uh, aware, I've pulled them to the scene so that they can see the room because they're in that room while you guys are not in the room. Oh, you can do that? That's cool. I'm assuming these paintings are the eight paintings you're talking about. Correct. And all of these uh, sort of little... Where they're, these little things, these are those lanterns that are just kind of floating. And what you notice is that they're sort of floating and uh like they're in various heights so some of them are like at seven feet some are at 10 some of them are like at 15 like they're almost like dispersed around to maximize the amount of light that reaches uh the different um i guess angles of the paintings really bring them alive can i check like the first painting for a trap uh sure painting would you like to look at great this one okay all right so uh go ahead and roll a perception check or investigation nice so you look around the painting and you know that it's not trapped in any way but it's odd that it's able to sort of be suspended there without any sort of like you can as you're going up to look at it you're looking at all angles and when you look sort of underneath it you see that it's actually kind of like half an inch off of the wall and it's not hanging on a nail it's not being uh it's not strung by any type of like string or anything like that it's kind of just free floating there's some sort of magic that keeps it in place. And what about this uh, this statue right here? Uh, so that statue, um, go ahead and roll me a perception check as you're looking it over. Uh, so as, as you're looking over the statue, uh, you notice a couple things. No, you notice one uh, that there's a plaque underneath the sort of pedestal that it's uh, atop of, uh, and it says Concord, Braid, Steed, and Trustworthy Companion. As you look over and sort of like uh, you, you start to look at all the different features and stuff, and this golden statue has pristine detail. Um, like you can almost see some of the fiber or the hair strands uh, as you look at the tail when you walk around you can see sort of like almost individual tail strands and things like that but you know that it's all one solid piece as you get a little bit closer and look at it you can tell that this gold plating is pretty much just that it's some sort of gold plating that has a way of being removed And is there, is there a window in here as well? 
Nope, you are underground. Oh. Actually, I guess. So, in, in actually, Angelica has no idea where you guys are. Uh, the last thing you remember is being outside. <laughs> so, uh, you yeah. look around, <laughs> and there's uh, above you. You can see the ceiling at like 30 feet. Um, and then you look around, and there's no no sort of window, no natural light. And the best you can tell is that the only way uh, to get in and out of this room is from the doors that you came through. Well, the doors that are behind you that you assume you came through. All right, I look to Snoopy. All right, looks like we gotta get this job done, and I have to jump back into that hole, into that napkin. Yep. All right. What'd you uh, find out about that uh, that uh, portrait right there? Um, it's just sitting there menacingly uh so the painting uh the painting as you look at the painting it's a woman uh a woman that's sort of she's something that you've seen before given your pirate background uh you would call her a merfolk and you can see that uh as she's sitting on this stump uh, she's holding this staff that has a bunch of different sort of faces and stuff on it. And the woman looks to be happy. Uh, and she's just admiring her staff. Okay. See if I can find a... Oh, I can't. Damn. Doesn't look like I can link what the uh, what it looks like. You can put it in the Facebook chat. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to search it up real quick. Copy image. Go to Book of Faces. Chat. That's what the staff looks like, and uh, you can see that she's kind of just holding it, and she's kind of, you know, smiling uh, as she's kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Um, Angie, you want to try and grab it down? Yeah. Yeah, the, the paintings, they're only, like, they're... They're a little above eye level, so they're roughly about like the six to eight feet. Uh, they're, I mean, they're pretty, yeah, they're about two feet tall. So they're from the six to the eight feet um, marker, which Angie comes right in the middle, literally eye level and is looking at it. All right, I just, I just grab it, grab it and is the hole still open? Uh, the hole is open, and as you grab it, you feel this sort of surge of magical energy, and uh, as you start to yank it, uh, go ahead and roll me a strength check. Nice. Very nice. So you, you grab it, and you, you, you know, thinking that it's just sort of suspended lightly, you you grab a hold and you start to pull and it doesn't budge. So then you like really set your feet down and you start to pull and you can feel it start to budge just a little bit before you hear clop, clop. <laughs> and as you look behind you, you see that the golden horse is uh, starting to animate and it starts to sort of shake its head and it looks at you and you can see these sort of uh, golden orbs uh, looking at you as it starts to do that thing with one of its paws before it charges. Oh, would you look at that. How big is our hole? Is it uh, 10 feet? Let's see. Portable hole. Portable oh, hole like is 6 feet in diameter. Uh, and I'm this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> well, how big is this horse? Uh, it's definitely it's a large creature, which um, uh, yeah. Okay. It's like the statue itself. It's definitely it's bigger than six feet diameter. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that it's 
100% 10 feet diameter, but it's definitely bigger than 6 feet. <laughs> you just hear Snoopy go, well, Angie? <laughs> Did he get the painting? Uh, uh, no, he started yeah. to get it to where it was starting to come free, but the magical binding is going to take a lot more than just that. So, it looks like we, uh, might have a, a fight on our hands if we don't deal with this. Is this horse just sitting there? It's, uh, as Angie, like, hears the sound, um, as Angie hears the clopping, uh, she kind of sort of releases to look at it, and she sees the horse staring dead at her uh, as she's holding the painting. Not making any moves yet. Uh, but it's definitely letting you know of its presence. I'm going to move over to this one. Does it see me? Uh, it does not seem to notice you move at all. It is currently fixated on Angelica. <clears throat> Can I take my dagger out and like try and cut the painting? Or a rapier, it doesn't really matter. Cut it in, like, the, like, cut it out of the frame? No, just, like, puncture it. Ruin oh, it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, so you, as Angelica's uh, standing there, uh, does Angelica continue to hold the painting at this point, or? Uh, I'll let it go for now. You let it go, and the horse kind of just continues to glare at you. Uh, occasionally, it will scrape its hoof, and you can hear you can hear the uh, the metallic sort of screech, almost like nails on a chalkboard, but uh, you know a lot worse. So you make it screech. Um, and Snoopy, you pull out your rapier and uh, you stab one of the paintings, which technically would be an attack action. And your invisibility goes away. Okay, that's fine. And uh, <laughs> as you puncture uh, the painting, uh, it uh, it makes an audible like sort of tearing sound, and the horse snaps its attention over towards you. It rears up uh, and sort of, <laughs> and uh, I need both of you to roll initiative. Um, as it punctured, can I do like a Zoro S? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, how do we roll initiative? Uh, I gotta do this thing. Essentially, roll it for you. Because it's all automated. There should be a button right next to your uh, name in a little combat round. Have any music playing? Or is there no music? Oh, there's, there's music, music going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't hear it, then you've either got Foundry muted or. Mm. It's low. Or maybe you've got the uh, the music tracker, like the. Because turned down or something. Definitely on. I'm like only getting Discord through. Regardless, yeah. I'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, Angelica, you're up. Okay. Oh no. One trying to do that. What is that? The hell do you have that's a radius? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action. Like, what? I was no longer. What? 
<laughs> Looks like you were already raging, so go ahead and just do it again, uh, so that it puts the proper stuff. Alright. Now I'm raging. And, uh... I'm going to... here and uh, you know what I'm going to uh, do a two piece on this on this portrait right here <laughs> am, I, am I able to attack this uh, this artwork yeah all right Let's see which one is that that one uh... That one, as you run up towards it and start, you start to hold back your hand uh, for a punch. You take a look at it real fast, and you can see the spitting image, the exact same creature that took your life, is painted on that portrait. You start to see all of the different sort of uh, details of the sort of pink skin that surrounded that grotesque eyeball. You can see that all of the fangs uh, in its uh, mouth are pointed exactly the same orientations as the one. You can see that each eye stalk has the exact same eye colors as the beholder that took your life. Uh, I'm gonna hold that, hold that fist and cancel it. Like, go. whoa. Uh, and I'll yell out real quick, Snoopy. You do you know what's up with these paintings? Just punch it. Alright, I'll punch it. Okay. You go in for a punch, and as you smack it, uh, especially with your uh, your ceases, you end up making a nice rip and tear. Uh, I'm a, I am would assume Angelica, like, hits it, and then rakes her fist across just to, like, sort That's of exactly rip it from... What I did. <laughs> <laughs> Tearing it, and you can just hear the <laughs> as it gets torn. And now, what you see is you see that painting, and you can see the beholder kind of split in two, but you can only see like the bottom part of its jaw and like a couple of its eye stalks above where you kind of took it out. And oddly, you feel satisfied about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to. Uh, how much movement do I have left? Uh, you I came from over move. here. You got 20 more, I think. Or 15 more. 15. Yeah, you got 15 more. Here we are that. And we're going to face... Face the... Uh, well, face in the direction of that. That way I'm not leaving my back open. Did you do anything to this one? Uh, he did uh, not. not yet. And... Our hole, I would assume, is like right here. That. Uh, yes. <laughs> Which let's yeah. see, we'll do. All right. So that is the. I think that's. Perfect. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than what it should be, uh, but you get the point. That's where it's at. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, it uh, is now Snoopy's turn. Um, first thing I'm gonna do as a bonus action. I don't remember how this thing works. Where? Items. Where's my goopy? Where's my goopy? Is he, he? He's not there. Uh, so if you go to the, where is it? So if you go to player extras, Goopy's in there. So you go to players, players extras, and Goopy should be right there. Oh, I was in. Uh... 
Wait. Yeah, I still haven't gotten the items thing figured out, so. Wait. In journal entries, right? Uh, no, it's in the actors directory. Oh, man. That's. Man, I saw it. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Goopy has entered the battle. Oh, you did it already. <laughs> I did. But you can have your Goopy. Um, I basically tell Goopy, <clears throat> destroy this painting over here. <clears throat> and so, let's see. Doesn't look like he can quite make it. He's gonna go over here. Okay. Goopy's got a high enough score to where he can jump over a six foot, you know, gaping hole. Easy enough. Oh, can he shoot at it with his crossbow? Yeah. So he'll shoot a little crossbow bolt, and as it hits, it goops, and you can see the. Uh, forget, is it? It's poison damage, right? It's poison, yeah. Yeah, poison. So it doesn't like uh, make it shrivel, but you can see that it's changing the coloration of the painting. So what uh, what what was once you know this this blue skinned woman with this uh, fine looking chainmail and this staff uh, is now starting to sort of turn green, and you can you watch as it's kind of seeping into the painting and sort of like making its way down. <clears throat> I will try and do a Zoro penis on this painting. Okay. And as you go uh, to attacking that painting, um, you can see this sort of great looking golem. Uh, that's essentially, you can see that on its back, it's got this, what looks to be like this large opening that you remind you of the cannons from your uh from your trip as a pirate um and you can see that it's currently crushing what looks to be this sort of eladrin village yes <laughs> i just respect this painting <laughs> by cutting a penis out of it okay <laughs> Or can I make right. it look like I'll I'll do it so it looks like the uh, the golem has a big old penis. Okay. The golem's got a big old looking penis <laughs> as it's smashing <laughs> these trees, and you can see the cannons like exploding. Like it's just it. There's so much action going on in this, and now there's a penis to draw your attention away from all of the action and stuff like that. Um. <clears throat> and then I move a little bit more, and then I'm done. Okay. Uh, so, real quick, we'll port back to uh, Maeve and O'Shea, uh, just so that they're also doing a thing while you guys are. <laughs> like how the music just stopped. Like that's yeah. some, that's so comedic. <laughs> like. <laughs> or wait, I was on. Wait, can they not see where we're at? Nope. They are they are in a they're on the whole they're still on the city of guilds. This music, bro. Like, like it's gonna keep I just imagine like a scene in a show like music's just all intense and it just cuts to like, well, uh we might want some pause. Tea? I love that the name of it is curious. <laughs> That's so I know what emotion it should bring out. Oh oh dear oh me. That sounded great. Yeah. Kirsten, we got a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you a a, a dope ass headset for Christmas. <laughs> I'm not making any noise. Oh, you yeah, are. <laughs> You're not making oh, it for uh, you, on, but. <laughs> what are you talking about? She knows. We. <laughs> it it is, it is because you you're you're using the laptop mic, right? Yeah. Yeah, I rest no, my no. case. <laughs> I rest my case. I'm confused. It, it's okay. You can't hear it, but we definitely can. So, and it, it's not you like hear it's. My clicking? 
No, yes. it sounds like uh, reverb from a mic up next to a speaker. Oh, weird. Well, I have some good headphones. I can go grab them real quick. If Hold you on. don't mind. Yeah, one sec. Let me go grab them. Guess, uh... Kevin, we're gonna die. Go ahead. And go the... <laughs> 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 that means the guy is good cause. It's for a good cause. Ruining <laughs> this amazing artwork for someone's petty satisfaction. Oh, dude, you're about uh, to get. So, uh, the horse runs up, coming towards Snoopy, as he was the first one to attack one of the paintings. And he, it rears up and tries to hit you with both of its hooves. It rolled a 27 and a 19. Both of those hit. Uh, um, for the... On the hold on, what would... I'm gonna use... Going to try and use Vanish from Sight. Um... I think you have it set up, so I'll... Attacked, you can see... Teleport so I'll roll away. a deck save, and it's gotta be 27, is that right? Ooh, correct. Which, which one was first? It was the 27. <laughs> That's unfortunate, isn't it? I can beat it! Ha! Oh man! What the <laughs> hell? Let's see, yeah, that's uh that's a succeed. You take no damage and teleport up to half your distance away. Which is twenty feet, right? I have a movement of thirty. It's your teleport distance. Oh, teleport distance. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be twenty. Okay. Luckily it still has enough movement to come and get you with that second hoof attack. So the first one misses, uh, but the second one is a nineteen and that will hit uh, I need a strength saving throw real quick. Rot row. Yeah, Snoopy's not that strong. Uh, so you do take a, uh, you do get knocked prone, and it gets to make a bonus action hoof attack against you. Uh, first you take 21 bludgeoning damage from that hoof attack. Jesus. Uh, and then with advantage, it hits you with a 21, since you're knocked prone, uh, for 19 damage. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it hit you with the first, or it, it would have hit you with the first hoof attack, but it missed because you did your reaction to teleport away. So that, that one got negated. But then it was able to still run up on you with its uh, remaining movement speed, attack you with the second one which uh you had to make a strength saving throw you rolled a four which you failed so you got knocked prone and because you got hit with it uh and knocked prone you uh the horse gets to make a bonus action hoof attack against you and because you're prone and it's within five feet of you it's at advantage so it rolled a 21 uh that hurt uh, so Angelica, you watch as this horse comes over, and as it rears up and it smashes down its hoof, Snoopy just disappears, and you see this big-ass hoof print in the concrete, and you kind of look at it from across the way, and you're like, damn, because it's cracked the cobblestone. The horse then uh, re-engages re to Snoopy and uh, goes in and essentially like does two uh, quick hoof attacks against Snoopy, which he falls down on the first one, and then you hear uh, you hear the sharp, uh, distinct uh, screech from Snoopy as, like, the Rrr! the yelp that dogs do when, like, you mm -hmm. step on their paw, and then you apologize for, like, five hours. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you, hear, you hear that yelp come from him as this horse is just beating up on him. Yeah. Uh, now that the horse is done, go back. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> we'll go upstairs. 
Uh, yes. And I dodged one that it definitely hit. Otherwise, that was a lucky roll. Uh, so upstairs, um, Maeve and O'Shea, you guys are currently standing in the middle of the foyer as everybody has already gathered in the Great Hall. And you can you can hear Madam Willoward uh, as she's starting to greet uh, keep people of the, uh, the party. And she is talking about what she has arranged for the night. So as she's babbling, you guys are just in the middle of the foyer. Just you two, you and O'Shea. The guards aren't paying attention to you. They're paying attention to the uh, to the crowd, and just making sure that you know no one approaches them and stuff like that. What are you guys up to? Uh. Mm. Hi. <laughs> uh. Can I? So we know where they were pulling the paintings and stuff out of, right? Correct. Okay. Um. O'Shea, did you want to go see if we can find that dog that Madam Willow Ward asked us to find? Or do you think we should take a look around? elsewhere oh uh, you told me to follow you earlier so I mean I told you to stay inconspicuous and not do anything you decided to follow me oh uh, well <laughs> I'm, just I'm, come with I'm... me let's walk around oh. okay cause I was gonna say we should mingle with the, you want to uh, mingle? Mm -hmm. So Brady, is is there like like a wine trays like going uh, yes, around? Yes, there. Like, is there like cheese plates? So as you start to walk towards the grand foyer, um, you can see that the the folks they're not like jam packed to where they're shoulder to shoulder. There's still plenty of room between all the patrons, as this room is large enough to hold this amount of people. And there still be room for everybody, including the servants, with trays of different foods, hors d'oeuvres, and drinks, um, beverages of all types, to walk around and serve all the people. Uh, so I I turn to Maeve, like you're you're used to this. How do I summon one of these these uh the people with the drinks? Uh. I would know, right, Brady? Yep, as a noble, you have been to these type of parties and things like that before. Uh, you know kind that of essentially, like... uh, you just look at one and you sort of like uh, toss up a hand and they come in mm -hmm. towards you. Yeah, I like slightly put my hand out. Just remember, I O'Shea, I grab a glass off the tray. And so... Um... I grab a drink, but then I told him, like, uh, before you leave, um, first, praise be Elmedian. What's your name? Uh, we do not use our names as we serve as a uh, act of privacy, sir. I do apologize. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm like, what? what does he have on? Does he just have, like, you know, like he's a got, bow tie you know, and all that? Does he have yeah. pants on? Yeah, he's got... I mean, he's dressed very... Like a very fancy waiter. Um, not necessarily a tux or anything, but he's got like that sort of vest with the bow tie. He's uh, yeah. he's very classy. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to slip a pamphlet in his pocket. Uh -huh. and oh, so we're him, not allowed to take tips. I do apologize. But thank you for uh, your this, generosity. This is this is this is going to change your life. So you you don't want to turn down this tip. So like I kind of put it back in his pocket a little bit. But let me ask you a and question. He he forcefully grabs it and tries to reject it again. Sir, I could lose my job if I take this. Doesn't matter what type of tip it is. I do not want it. 
Okay. I'm I like grab it. I'm like, thank you. You can go. No, no. I. I hush. Yes, my lady. And he turns around and walks away. And even as O'Shea's like, no, no, come back. Uh, he can definitely distinguish who is in charge between the two of you. I'm gonna find another one of these people and summon them. O'Shea, stop! You have to like be inconspicuous. If you're not trying to pass wanna, around your pamphlets, I just want to, to talk to one of them. That's all. People, they don't want to talk. They want to work. Are we making a scene? Uh, so, I mean, as you two are kind of talking to each other, there are a couple noble folks that are kind of looking at you, and one of them goes, Psst, quiet, Madam Willowald's talking. Rude. Ugh. I guess we pay attention, but I'm going to look for another one of those servants. There are plenty of them. I'm gonna stop one of them. I make like little motions, like the O'Shea can't see, for them to like walk away and not come near us. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I don't pay attention to her too doing that. Okay, yeah. So you end up you uh, raise your you know your arms and you beckon one over, and as it's walking, uh, you see its eye like the servant's eyes. They've kind of got this like uh, this hazy look about them, um, like their eyes are half open. And as it's walking towards you, its eyes open wide for a moment, and then it walks away from you. And then you, you're like, that's weird. So you call another one over, and the exact same thing happens. They're walking towards you. It looks like they got this fabulous uh, meat and cheese tray um, with all types of like delicate meats and uh, artisan cheeses, things like that. And just as they're like within the next five to ten feet of you, uh, their eyes kind of I open up wide and then they turn around and walk away and serve other people. <laughs> so, <laughs> not knowing what she's doing, O'Shea's gonna kind of lose his cool a little bit and get upset <laughs> and just and just says rude. Like kind of. Then... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of folks look back at you. Excuse me, madam. Would you keep your servant uh, hushed, please? Yes, apologies. He's new. And at this point, you notice that Madam Willow Ward is looking your way and is not speaking anymore. Uh, most all the patrons are looking your way. May I present Maeve Vosen, everybody, from oh. the Vosen family. She starts to clap, and all the patrons start to clap, and like, and they start to whisper, but you can't tell what they're saying because of all the clapping. But a lot of the noble folks are starting to whisper. Um, I to raise other. my glass and give her a little bow. Uh, please, dear, step forward. Come introduce yourself. Oh, that's. Is that's she looking towards necessary. like this us? Is your party, yep. Madam Willoward, Lady Willoward. Oh, but this was all part of the plan, dear. O'Shea's gonna go up there. No. Not not your bird. You. O'Shea, can you like go outside or something? Did did the so so I wanna know when she called when she called for her, like did did the people like part to make a way so she could go up there? Yeah. Uh as she I'm gonna she go down there. Okay, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> so O'Shea starts to go. Your servant can stay behind. I do not require his presence. O'Shea, stay. But why? Why do they think I'm a servant? Because we oh? told you are a servant, sir. A filmmaker, yes, I know. No, you're here because my mother sent you to me to serve me. Uh, so, so <laughs> apparently he has the memory of a bird as well, Madame Willow Ward. <laughs> what? What? So <laughs> O'Shea is gonna like <laughs> cock his head to the side, <laughs> like how birds do in quack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, you you do oh, that. And... Shoots a fireball. 
Oh, I guess yeah. that's the signal. <laughs> oh, dude, I wish he was here. I wish he was here. Oh, my God. Yeah, that I wish hilarious. he was here and Vicavore. Yes, was... they would have took advantage of that. Damn. Hey, RP uh, Vicavore. But, uh... Oh, well. Anyway, uh, let's see. Anyway, uh, so O'Shea, as you're like halfway there, uh, Maeve kind of like puts her hand on your shoulder and tells you to stop. And then you're like, yo, what's going on? Uh, it's fine, dear. Bring him with. He's an interesting fellow. O'Shea, don't embarrass me, please. Fortunately, that's far from what has already happened, dear. Yes, agreed. All right. Uh, I kind of like make a gesture, like kind of like a hold my beer gesture towards her, just like nonchalant. And are we both going up there, or yeah, okay, yeah, we're well, both she's going up. summoned, so <laughs> now, as many of you know, I was getting into. A working relationship with the Vosen family, and they were nice enough to send me their only daughter to settle our agreements behind closed curtains. But I would like to make a toast to the Vosens for putting their trust within the Willowald family. Everyone, raise your glass to the Vosen and Willowald alliance. And all the noble men and women, uh, they raise a glass. Cheers! Hear, hear! Hear, hear! And yeah. they all start to clink their glasses. And Madam Willoward looks to you and smiles. And uh, she clinks your glass. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you here, dear. You know, I've always it... wanted a daughter. Hmm. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. And your servant, does he have a name, perhaps? Yes, this is O'Shea. O'Shea. I trust we won't have any more issues out of you tonight. Uh, Brady, is there like a musical band or something, like an orchestra nearby? Uh, in fact, there is. They're not playing the song you're hearing, but, you know. Um... So I, I, I turn to Madam Willoward. Uh, do they take requests? Because this she is this looks is a, over. This is a fine occasion, oh right? God. It is, but I'm not sure, based on your recent behavior, that your musical taste are up to snuff. So no request from you. And she kind of like. Uh, she narrows her eyes as she's, like, looking you up and down. Oh, okay. Uh, O'Shea just starts to roost. What? Okay, so O'Shea, like, starts to walk in a circle real quick, and then he sits down. Maeve, dear, have you found that puppy of yours? I feel that he's gotten lost. You should really um, check on him. Yeah, I looked around a little bit, but couldn't see anything. I was told by some of the guards that you guys don't want people in certain parts of the house and without knowing exactly where he was going. It's almost impossible for me to find him unless I have full access to the house. Oh, no need for full access, but I, I've i had strays walk into my house before, and they always seem to go to the cellar. I think there's a scent of uh, preserved foods and such that draw their attention. I would check there. Weird. So is the food the only thing that's down there, or should I be worried about anything else? She shrugs her shoulders. I don't know about worried. Okay. Go have a look. Please find him. I, I shall go look get... just for you, Madam Lord. Thank you. I don't wish for him to pee on my rugs. They're quite exquisite. Hmm. I'll be sure to keep an eye out for the rugs as well. 
thank you very much. Uh, now, I have a party to host, so if you would take O'Shea and yourselves and attend to that matter for me, we'll talk business when you're finished. Yeah. O'Shea, she come smiles on. smiles, and uh, as, as you start to walk away, she steps down from uh, her sort of light little platform that she was on and starts to go mingle uh, with some of the patrons. Uh, are we still on the stage? Uh, you are. Uh, not. You're currently being dragged by, uh, Maeve. Maeve out of there. No, no. <laughs> this is my only chance. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going. And then, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, how does she not know what's in that cellar? How does who not know? No, I was... That's what O'Shea is saying to me. Oh. She probably does. She just doesn't want to tell us. Exactly. Well, let's go look anyway, because I think we're still around other people. <laughs> and do as she asks. And hopefully yeah. everything will be okay. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, so O'Shea willingly follows you now, but, um, yeah, I don't like the seller idea. This is a setup. Okay, so, uh, we'll say that in another round, after this next round, uh, you guys will end up getting to that door, um, just to sort of streamline things a little bit. So I'm going to put you guys onto, uh, that map. You should be able to see everything. Um, but we're at the top of the round with Angelica. Okay. Uh, God dang. And this is uh this is the little the horse. Can okay. I am you whine like a puppy. What did you yeah. hold on, what did you say, Brady? Because the music like always keeps going really loud. Uh, I said that uh, in a round, so after this next round of combat, you guys will essentially be at that door um, as you come to the cellar, just to sort of streamline things and get you guys involved. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, Angelica, it is your go. Here. All right, we're gonna have to do it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and oh, three. What the fuck? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and throw a fireball. I was trying to measure. You can totally uh, get rid of that. Delete that. Okay. All right. Uh... <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did you get a radius attack? <laughs> Both of you guys. Like, All right. Oh, um... that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, a couple of javelin real quick. At disadvantage, of course, because I'm, I'm more than more than 30, 30 feet. All right. I'm gonna throw it at. Uh, disadvantage, eleven misses. And we'll try again. And 15 misses, but barely. Okay. And then, uh... I'm gonna use my bonus. And do one more. Alright. Uh, so I don't... I don't believe... I don't believe you can bonus action for a javelin. I'm pretty sure your class says the bonus action has to be for a Cestus or an unarmed strike. Oh, okay. Well, Alright, Redcon. It's Redcon that then. Never mind. Is it 20 <laughs> we'll use... miss? I missed. Uh, that. he's got disadvantage because he's out of range. Oh. And uh, I guess uh, last thing I'm gonna do before I end my turn will be scream towards the horse and be like, "Hey, hey, pussy, come get me! Come on!" <laughs> and then we end it. 
<laughs> All right, Snoopy, you're go. <laughs> the Snoopy runs on the other side of the horse, um, not getting out of combat range. I do this by bonus action dashing to get here. And then I will use my teleportation movement to get into the hole. And can I use my action to hide in the hole? Yeah, definitely. Go ahead and uh, roll a stealth. Nice. I'm pretty hidden, I would assume. So, Angelica, you watch this, and it's very comedic. Uh, you watch as the horse is, like, trampling the area, and at this point, Snoopy's, like, rolled over as the horse is, like, like, smacking down and just leaving its hoof prints into the cement, and it dashes through its legs, and the horse comes down with a mighty blow, but obviously doesn't hit anything. As Snoopy runs between the legs, he teleports to where he's, like, above the hole, and you watch him just sink into the hole, and the horse uh, turns around real quick and doesn't see Snoopy at all, and it looks at you. Um, and then Goopy, what's the range on his hand crossbow? It's pretty small, isn't it? Do you know? Um, off the top of your it head? should say the range is 30 feet, and then it'll be disadvantaged past that okay. up to 120 30, 60, feet. Probably. 30, 120. <laughs> um, he will move 30 feet and shoot a crossbow bolt at this one over here. Actually, this one within 30. No. I'll shoot one at the far one. Okay, the one directly in front of Goopy? Yeah, the back corner here. Okay. Uh, so that unfortunately uh, does not hit. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. So he shoots have his... an AC higher than nine. Yeah. They're hard. AC of ten. Most uh, <laughs> inanimate <laughs> objects a... have an AC of ten. That's a base for a human that can move. Pretty sure, but like doors, home. doors AC are ten. Yeah, but that's because like, he has to like hit it hard. I don't know. It's fine. I, you're right, but it's still bullshit. <laughs> the irony that he conveniently got a nine. I agree with you, but I also don't agree with Yeah, you. look at this. Armor class for cloth, paper, and rope is actually 11. Baseline. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty far shot for a crossbow. I am not going Yeah. That's a tough real pistol shot, really. That's true, yeah. I, I can barely shoot that shit, and I have to qualify, I think, every three years on the M16. I'm not well versed in firearms. Uh, so, that is Goopy and Snoopy's <laughs> turn. Oops. Uh, we'll just skip. Yeah, skip. Did the Eye of Dendalian see our friends coming? Uh, they're about to. Uh, we'll do the Golden oh. Horse real quick. Uh, so the horse will move 30 feet over this way in front of Angelica, and it is going to attempt uh, two hoof attacks on you. Uh, let's see. First one misses with a 15. Second one hits with a 22. Uh, you are raging, but uh, you can feel there's this sort of magical essence that's overcoming your normal resistance. Uh, to this, you know, mundane type of damage. Uh, so you take 20 bludgeoning damage, and I need a strength saving throw, please. Uh, so as the what first hoof comes down, you dodge out of the way, and you can see that there's like a... as if it was prepared for you to make that movement, and it comes down and hits you on the shoulder, and as it sort of makes your feet sort of, uh, like, crack the uh the ground below you you're able to sort of like push up your shoulder in the rage um because you do have advantage on that uh and you sort of hold your ground but you can feel the immense weight of just this attack coming down and it, you're you feel 
like you think to yourself you're like thank god i didn't get my shoulder dislocated from that holy shit this thing is tough uh but it does not uh succeed on knocking you prone so that is its turn uh let's see i need to actually bring you back now top of the round uh O'Shea and Maeve, as, at the end of that round, you guys uh, get down to the stairs and you look at both sides. Snoopy, uh, you hear, or you suddenly know that your team, the rest of your team, is outside the door. They notice, uh, they hear the sort of cracking of cobblestone and the sort of snorts coming from the horse and instinctively run over there to open the door to see this unfold in front of you guys. Uh, I will say, just because of the fact that the hole is literally right there in front of the door, you guys see the hole, and you like sort of peer inside, and you can see Snoopy down there, and he's noticeably hurt, injured. I have okay. rolled y'all's, uh, I rolled y'all's, uh, initiative already, uh, so you guys can we can also go. tell which paintings have been damaged? Uh... Go ahead and Just roll me perception check, and we'll see if you can see the beholder one to the right. You wouldn't be able to see the ones to your immediate left and right, but you can see the... You I might be able to see this one or this yeah, one. Yeah, do a PP on that one. Yeah, the war golem. Because it's D&D &D and you gotta do super... Yeah, it's gotta have penises somewhere. Dick jokes. No, Just it, like that was Critical missing. Role episode where they had 123 in one episode. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't just yeah, it wasn't just jokes. a dick. It was oh, dick joke. It wasn't just a dick. It was dick butt. <laughs> dick butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gerald, are you AFK? No, uh, what happened? Roll perception. Roll a perception. Oh, I thought. Oh. Uh, no, you, neither of you, you're too distracted by the scene in front of you, seeing your new friend, your new compatriot, Snoopy, uh, extremely injured, and you see this big-ass giant golden horse, like, whooping Angelica, well, not really whooping, but starting to beat down on Angelica. Uh, so you guys do not know which paintings are broken just yet, uh, but it will become obvious soon. Uh, so yeah, top of the round is Angie. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to I'm about to risk this, but yeah, screw it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give him a two piece. <laughs> go ahead and give him a two piece, and uh, can I expend a charge too on my on my Cestus? See if yeah. it does anything. Okay. One. There's one which hits. Uh, that just hits. All right, and then I want to expend a charge on that too. What would I expend that? Uh, so on your character sheet, if you go to uh, go to your inventory and just click on the vault gauntlets and just roll them. Actually, yeah, I didn't put the. I don't think I put the macro on on your thing. Um, but you can click and drag that macro to your bar, and it's kind of like your grappling one, making all these circles. And that should automatically, yeah, it automatically took the charge away. So if you see to the right of where it says Volt Gauntlets, you'll see the five out of six. So currently okay. if you, you've expended one charge and you dealt uh, an additional five, I believe it's lightning damage. I don't know why it doesn't say it. It I'm needs a, to. I'm expend. I'm that. expend. I'm gonna expend a second charge too on that as well. Don't I don't think you can just expend as many oh. as you want. Oh, okay, so it's just uh like once per turn type of deal? Yeah, exact yeah, exactly. Yep. Well Gotcha. When you hit a creep you so you can do it for each attack that hits, actually, but it's only okay. for each attack. So you can expend two charges. Okay. We'll do that. Nice. So it and takes both of those. Let me see. Boom. So, as you punch the creature, uh, 
you start to make dents into its uh, sort of golden plating. And the thing that you notice is that there's, there's definitely a magic that's sort of protecting this creature. And the other thing you notice is that these gloves that you've got are helping you to get past that barrier that you weren't able to overcome uh, before you had found these gauntlets. So you punch it twice and you can feel the jolt of electricity sort of surge through uh, the, the giant horse. And obviously it doesn't like twitch or anything like that um, because it's made out of metal uh, or at least it's plated in metal right now. But after you're done with it, you kind of look at the gauntlets and you're like, yes, unlimited power. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and use some bonus action. What that. is this other radius that I see here? What is that? Where did I that come from? I accidentally made it and I couldn't delete it. Why'd you do? Oh shit, now I'm making them. I made the blue one. Let me just uh, trash them all. Boom. Good. All I right. deleted the other ones I accidentally made, but I couldn't delete that one. And you're doing that's your bonus action to do a little heal. It should have healed you already. And I believe I've got god damn it, it doesn't take away your hit dice for some reason. I think we're gonna have to like there's something wrong with your sheet. Like, mm -hmm. uh not not anything that we input, but some there's some sort of glitch with your sheet to where your hit dice are all jacked up. So I think what we're gonna have to do is either duplicate it and retry to make it, or just make it from scratch uh, another day, so that okay. this does. But for now, we'll go into features and we can edit how many hit dice you have. Um, yeah, I should have like eight left now. Can I just use that? Yep, there. So I can manually do that. I don't mind. Uh, or well, go to your features real quick. And where you see class levels, that very first little blurb uh, where it says barbarian, you should be able to click on the little pin icon to the very right of it. Mm -hmm. And where you see hit dice used, in order to make it say nine out of nine, I have to put it at negative three for some reason. So just every okay. time you use the I am unbreakable, go ahead and just reduce it um, by one, or I guess okay. increase it by one. Okay. Then once it cool. gets to zero, yeah, you just keep increasing it by one. That should fix it. Uh, I'll try. We we sh I'll, I'll have time this weekend, uh, and I can go through and remake the sheet uh, if need be. Okay. What was that? Um. Oh yeah. Damn, it's too late for me to do it. Well, is it too late for me to uh use my uh? My brutal critical. Uh, I don't think you critted on anything. So your critical, your brutal cool crit, your brutal critical is embedded in your sheet. It'll automatically roll. Uh, if ah. you're looking at your Cestus, the 16, you that just yeah. means that you rolled the max damage on that. Oh, okay. You have okay. to roll okay. an attack. You have to roll in a, a critical strike for the brutal cool critical brutal critical to take effect. Gotcha. All right, I'm dumb. Okay, we're good. And uh, I guess uh, <laughs> I have movement. And uh, he's going to attempt to attack me as I do that movement. So. Uh, shoot, man. All right, I guess I'm going to... How how tall is this horse again? It's at least ten feet. Uh, okay. Probably closer to the thirteen foot uh, realm. It's it's a big ass statue. Okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out this broom. All right. And uh, I'm gonna attempt to push off it and go up. Okay. About. All right. And how much, uh, how, let me go and look at this again. How much, uh, distance can it I should go? Have, like... Magic Broom should have, uh, I think a flying speed of 50. 
All right, so I'm going to try and go up 30 feet. And I'm gonna, I'll am take that, his his reaction. That's fine. Room of flying, you get 50 feet of flying speed. Yep. I'm actually going to annotate on that, that on your sheet as the special movement is uh, broom 50 feet fly. That way we know for sure. Okay. So I'll take, All right. I'll take his reaction. That's fine. Is the so, ceiling 50 feet up? No, it's 30 feet up, uh, but you oh, okay. get to the ceiling. Uh, so you, we'll say that you go up roughly 25 feet uh, just because you need a little bit of head space. Yeah. Cause my whole but you are, you are... You are... Definitely out of its attack range, uh, but it does go in for a hoof attack and it does miss with a 15. Um, Perfect. So now we'll put 25 right there. So now we know you're 25 feet in the air. And we end that turn. We're good. All right, Snoopy, you're up. Um, we'll start with Goopy. Goopy moves. 30 feet. Um, let's see, how far away is that now? 30, it's 35, so still barely out of range. He'll that shoot one's at this right one. in range. AC is 11. <laughs> As we found out. <laughs> <laughs> he can do it. Alright, yeah, Maybe. so. Um, I forget. Does Goop, Goopy does, yeah, Goopy doesn't relay thoughts or anything, so Goopy technically doesn't see this. Uh, Angelica, I though, I... I think you can use your action to look through his senses, but he doesn't, no, wait, yeah, I think right here he kind of acts as a fine familiar, uh, so we'll say that you get, you get like, you get to see what this is. Uh, the painting anyway, yeah, and it has to be an action. you're right. Yeah, uh, but we'll we'll say that as he shoots it, like you get like an image in your head of what Goopy's kind of seeing, um, and you just see this sort of uh, it, it's a very splotchy drawing of a field with a bunch of different colorful flowers and things like that, um, almost like something that a kindergartner makes for their parents. You know, it's got a couple stick figures. Um, and things like that. The thing you notice is that there is a man, there is a woman, and there are two boys. One of the boys is a little bit taller than the other one. One boy, the taller boy, has what looks to be a ponytail, and the other boy has horns. Otherwise, you have I, no distinguishing characteristics. I'm so right, but, uh, okay. Uh, Snoopy, what am I gonna do? I think Snoopy's about to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, already in action. If the horse looks like it's gonna attack me, I'm gonna blink out of this hole and sprint away. Okay. Um, Picking up the Eye of Dendalion on the way. Okay. Otherwise, you stay in the hole? Yeah, I'll stay hidden. Okay. Right, so that is the end of Snoopy's turn. Uh, Maeve, it is your up. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the left. And you has... look at that painting and see that it has an S etched into it. Okay. Can I take a look around and see if the other ones close by have also been destroyed? Can I do another yeah, you can, check? You can see, you can definitely, like now that you're in here uh, and looking, you see that this one has a big penis on it. This one has uh, been essentially torn in two and you just witnessed uh goopy shoot this one and like make it discolored and i'll say just just for ease you can see this one has been discolored as well from uh snoopy's little blotch okay what so are, just the what back are, what are all these templates what is this i'm putting the circles on there so i know which ones 
so I'm gonna forget. Oh. <laughs> How about this? I, I'll do you one better. Put my I circles will... back. <laughs> oh, I can't. I, I can Never delete mind. them. I can't do a thing. Never mind. I thought I could do a thing. You can bring them back if you so want. So just those back three ones? Uh, currently, yes. These, these three have been untouched. Okay. And then Angie's up in the air, so she's safe. Okay. Um... How far can the carpet go? Sixty feet. Okay. So I'm gonna go fifteen feet into the air on the carpet. Which gives me oh shit, math. You have already moved a little bit too, so uh, you've moved 15 feet already. So even though the magic carpet gives you more speed than you already have, you can't exceed the amount of speed uh, total on a turn that you have based on whatever the highest that you could go. So if the magic carpet can go 50, you running 15 feet gives you an extra 35 feet that you can use on the magic carpet, if that makes sense. Uh, I guess. I'll believe you. I don't know. <laughs> it says Not 60 feet. As five well, yeah, yeah. feet. Yes, but you move. You already moved 15 feet as your person. You can't then move an additional 60 feet. It doesn't uh, work that way. You can, with the magic carpet as a vehicle source, you can move on oh. your turn to a maximum of 16 feet. Got it. So it's or not like two separate things. Feet. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I have 30 feet left then. Oscar. So I will fly up 30 feet. Little man. Come here. Wait. The 15 feet is out of range of the uh, thing, right? The what? It's out of range of the statue. Yeah, you're currently nowhere in range of him. No, I mean like up. Oh. Um No, he's got a five foot reach, so you have to be twenty feet or higher. Twenty feet? Okay. So I'm gonna go twenty five feet then and then be at twenty feet. Okay. And then let's see. Just so you're aware, uh, commanding the carpet does take an action, so you just have a bonus action left. Okay. Let's see how far. Oscar's DMing with me. Told me to kill you. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, I'll try heck on it. No, wait. Hold on. Yeah, I'll try hex on it. See what it does. All right. On the golden horse. Yeah. Go ahead and cast your spell. And you've moved, you've cast bonus action, done an action, so I'm assuming you're done. Mm hmm. Does it do any damage to it or not? Place on a curse until the spell ends, you deal extra necrotic damage whenever you hit it with an attack. So it doesn't do anything yet, um, but it is currently affected. Uh, cause it's okay. got no save or anything, so I will put... Sweet! I wasn't sure if it would actually affect it because it was necrotic damage, cause technically it's metal. So... Unless it, like, starts rusting, I guess? Well, as the creatures, creatures have a, uh... 
they have a list of things that they're resistant or immune to. So if yeah. the product's on that list, I'll let you know accordingly oh. after it happens. When it's we'll supposedly the... trying yeah. to take damage. Got it. Okay. Oh, whoops. Oh, I rolled the same thing. That's weird. But we'll use the little screaming face to denote the hex. Okay. That's uh, it. And now it is you. O'Shea. O'Shea, 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 O'Shea. Uh, now it is, it is time to shine. Watch them be complete trash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Ed Simmons. laughs> Hard. So I'm like confused on what's going on. Uh, so uh, as you walk in, it... you see that there's, uh, you see a couple things. You've noticed that uh, Goopy, which I don't think, no, you've met Goopy. I think you've met Goopy. Anyway, no, you see I... a spitting image of Goopy, or of Snoopy, shooting a crossbow at the paintings. And then you also see this giant golden horse uh, attempting to beat the shit out of Angelica. You see Snoopy uh, essentially trying to preserve his own life inside of the portable hole that you guys were going to uh, use for other reasons. Uh, but he's using it as a hideout currently. And then you see Maeve has floated up into the air uh, out of reach of this golden horse. Um, so the portable hole is not the napkin? Or the thing? Uh, it's Yeah, they're one and the same. When it's picked up, it is essentially the size of a napkin. Um, so, but I didn't. we didn't see Snoopy go in there, did we? Well, as you come, since the portable hole is laid down right in front of the door, you guys can look down and see him. It's not, it's not like a, uh, like if you're looking in the hole, you will see him. He's got no place to hide. He's okay. like out in the open. I want to look inside. Okay. And you see Snoopy there. Uh... He looks like he's ready to pounce out of there and jet. He also looks very hurt. Uh, so I'm just gonna ask him, uh, what are you guys doing in here? What are you asking that? He's asking that to Snoopy? Yeah, Snoopy, because I stuck my head in there. Unless he's not nearby, then I don't ask it. Did you Joe, are you there? Me? We did, did not hear you. Oh. Um, you hear I whimpering, I think. Sad, <laughs> sad puppy noises. Um, wait, how do you, he doesn't know what's going on? That is what he's uh, claiming, yes. Yeah, I mean, O'Shea doesn't know what's going on. He just sees shit hitting a fan. Uh, the horse attacked us when we tried to do the painting. Oh, um, you get in there. And uh, you get in oh, okay. what did you say? Run away and survive. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I don't know if he has one, but I'm gonna hand him one of my potions. Okay. Is that an action? Uh, no. It's a... Or, yes. No. Object interaction to hand it. If you were to actually physically, like, pour it down his mouth, it's an action for you to do it to other people. Bonus action for yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna give it to him. Yeah, so that's an object like, interaction. Just hand him. Okay, so I'm just handing off a vial of one of the potions that I have. Just deduct that from your inventory and then you still have uh, your full turn ready. All right, so I'm noticing everybody else is in the air, so O'Shea's gonna do the exact Which same thing. Which type of healing potion is this? Uh, hold on. It it doesn't Mine it just is says a potion, potion of healing. healing it's a normal one it's the 2d4 plus yeah. two okay all right and you have a fly speed of 50 feet 
Um. Shit, sorry. New loot. Okay, so I'm a, I'm gonna fly up. Uh, yeah, fifty feet. Or can I? How tall is this? You're gonna have to go like twenty feet. You can go. Yeah, you can. You can go fly up to twenty five feet. It's a thirty foot ceiling, but at twenty five feet, since you guys are all, you know, not halflings, uh, the rest of the yeah, it's just twenty five feet. Okay, so I'm gonna fly the maximum feet I can fly. And then. So it's 25, so I have what? Okay. 25 left. There's another 25. Okay, so I don't move my movement speed. So. And then how close am I to the. Uh, you are technically. 25 feet above it, yeah? Yeah, you're 25 feet above it. It sits roughly about 10 feet tall, um, and it would be able to reach anything that's 15 feet or lower uh, in the air. So, math, you are you are 20 or 20 feet away from it, like range-wise. Okay, I am my turn. The horse. Uh, looks up and sees that it is unable to hit anybody, uh, so it will go to its next victim. Uh, Latest. <laughs> uh, it rolled a 28, which, yeah, one shot's Poor Goopy. Girl. The horse runs over and stamps out Goopy, and it just splats. And uh, it actually makes it to where, I guess it uh, sort of muffles the sound of the cracking cobblestone as it smacks into the ground uh, and then as it sees that Goopy is gone uh, it turns around and uh, just trots back over starts trotting back over towards its uh, pedestal uh, just keeping an eye on all of you uh, Snoopy for you as the uh, end of the round uh, comes uh, do you have in do you did you want to use your uh, held action to move and stuff? I'm okay. <clears throat> the I'm what? Good. Okay. Um, unless I can change what I was gonna move to, I don't know. Is it an the way? Somebody? Yeah. No. So the way the way held actions are written is that you say a thing. If it triggers, then you use your reaction to do the thing. Um, right. If it never happens, then you just lose it. But I don't like that. I like it to where if you say I'm going to hold an action, you let me know what it is. But if that changes and you're like, hey, let me do this instead, I allow that to happen. Oh, okay. Um, the only thing I would do would be to run and blink up onto the magic carpet with me. I'll allow you if... to do that. Okay. Yeah, your blink uh, range is... Yeah, you're within range of the blink... Um, can I, to do it, can I, like, climb out of the hole, pick up the napkin and blink? Is that too yeah, much? Yeah, that, nah, it's, it's pretty simple stuff for a dexterous doggo like yourself. Okay. Okay. And then at the, so as the new round begins, um, your, you start to get an image of a woman outside of the door, uh, who is Madam Willow Ward, waving her hand. And then the Eye of Dendalion seems to get pushed into the room from some invisible force. <laughs> and now it is Angelica's turn. Lovely. Okay. I am going to uh, fly. Let's fly right here. And... Uh... All right, and we're going to throw a javelin to both of these 
at both of these uh, pictures. Okay. Uh, so 15 hits, 26, or... No, you have advantage, even... Or it's a flat roll, uh, even if it's outside of the range, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because it's a strength-based check. So, which pictures? The two right in front of you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, the picture on the right... As you throw your javelin and it sinks into it, you can hear, you know, you can hear it obviously, like almost as if you just hit a wooden plank and it's like, pum, 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 you know, doing that, uh, that sound. Uh, but as you're throwing it and taking aim, you notice that the the picture is some sort of hand uh, that's holding a letter um, up from the water, and you can see. You can only see a couple letters of it. It says A N, and then it you don't see anything else after that. Uh, but it looks to be uh, a man's hand holding that letter. And then you take the javelin and you throw it at the other painting to your left. And this one, uh, for whatever reason, as it comes close, it stops right before it hits it. And as you're looking at it, you see a gentleman uh, dressed in very fine uh, garments and armor. Uh, he's got a uh, cup of wine in his hand, and he's got sort of a, a goatee kind of going on uh, sort of thing. Definitely some sort of noble warrior. And for whatever reason, as the javelin comes close, it just stops like within an inch of hitting the painting is just suspended there. Well, that is, uh, that's fucked. Well, uh, I'm gonna ignore that and I'm going to spend hit die. <laughs> and okay. heal. And, uh, wait, my turn. Uh, so the rest of you, you see this, you see Angelica as she throws the javelins and they don't seem to make any, you know that her aim was true on that second one. And for whatever reason, it didn't connect. Uh, Snoopy, you're up. Um, <laughs> I actually need to reread something really quick. Go for it. While you do that, I'm going to go get me a Truly. And the cool thing about my uh, new microphone is that it's wireless, so I can just walk and hear you guys talk shit. <laughs> Damn, uh, come on. Let's just start talking shit. Let's just lie down and go get whatever you guys do. That's bullshit. God, but he's always ruining the fun. <laughs> hey, man. Got to keep you honest. Now that Brady's listening, hey, everybody, how y'all doing? <sighs> Not very good now that I feel like we've been set up. So, I told y'all, bro, y'all don't be listening to me, man. I swear I'd be on that, <laughs> on that tip, but y'all just refuse to listen, but hey. Snoopy's yeah, the only yeah. one that knows that Madame Will Ward's coming, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Correct. Now, yeah. That woman was like, that woman said, I, go straight to the, the basement. Um, I'll just shoot Vigilance at the horse. Okay, go ahead and roll the attack, and I'll see if it hits or not when I get there. Actually, you can tell me uh, what the roll is, I guess. Did the ammunition thing again. Dang it, Bobby. My bad. I I am not sure why it keeps uh, reapplying those attributes. I'll fix it. Even though Foundry brings so many possibilities, it has its tedious little issues too, which is upsetting. But that's okay. I still think it's definitely an improvement over Roll20. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I would say I'm not sure. Let's see, can 
I open Snoopy's sheet, inventory, vigilus, edit, and details, get rid of ammunition. Try shooting it now. Actually, I don't think that'll work. Let's do this. Boom. And try shooting it now. And are you... There we go. Whoa. <laughs> And that's to the horse? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That barely misses. Like, you shoot it, and the horse, like, moves and, uh, like, as it hears the clink to look at you. And as it does, it, like, hits the, uh, sort of the plate, the golden plate, and, like, ricochets off. Um, I call out, uh, as my eye of Dendalian, like, Flops into the room. Willow Ward's coming. Everybody Most... take a bow. Uh, <clears throat> we still have two left. Uh, is that all from Snoopy then? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Maeve, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna f fly up 45, 45 feet, 50 feet. We'll go that far. Um, she can't see us yet, right? Who? Willow Ward. Uh, you have no idea. You mean I can't turn around and look on the carpet? Is the door open? Um, uh, no, the door is like... Actually, I guess you guys would have left the door open, huh? When you walked in, Snoopy was the only one that specifically said that he kept it cracked. So yeah, the door is open. Um, and I'll say, yes, you can see her, um, show her token. She's kind of just sitting there watching you guys do your thing. Okay, I'm going to retcon that and not move. I'm going to go back. Because if she can see us, then I'm going to be like... Well, she can see you from there, too. No, I know. That's what I'm saying, is I'm just not going to bother flying up then. Um, I found the dog! <laughs> but... You're staring strat statues running around everywhere. She just looks at you and smiles, but this time a little more wickedly. Hmm. That's fine. Hmm. Anything from Maeve? Yeah, hold on. I am... going to... Hold on, now I have to... I'm gonna do... <laughs> I don't like that. That's oh, crazy. I wanted to see if it would do it. <laughs> I was just sitting there looking like at us like remix? I, I might. That's that's what that's what Joker is doing as he's seeing us get wrecked. Or potentially about to get wrecked. Fine. Okay, I am going to Hold my action. Do do. To cast. Uh, 
It can be any action, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if something or someone attacks me, I'm going to hold Eldritch Blast okay. and attack back if they try. Okay. You start to chant the, uh, the spell and you get it to the point where it's ready to be unleashed and you kind of hold it and just gauge your surroundings. Uh, if you have, if you wish to move at all, you may. Otherwise, O'Shea, you're up. So this uh, horse is still running rampant. I mean, currently it's kind of like, uh, think of when a boss loses aggro and it just starts to walk back to where it spawned at. It's currently just walking back to where, you know, its pedestal is because it has nothing to attack. Um, does everybody know that she's here? Well, no, you, you announced it. Yeah, you announced it. Yeah. Never mind. Snoopy. And we can see her at the door. A lovely woman. Oh yeah, uh, I'm currently not in my. I should be in my uh, my, my super costume, super suit. I have my regular token up right now. Boom. Yeah, I, I I really don't have anything that I want to do because we've been had. So it's like I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens from here. Okay. Do you just end your turn then? Yeah, I'm in my turn. Okay. Horse gets back on its pedestal and it stands there and you watch Madam Willow Ward uh, wave a finger and it sort of perches back up and sort of like, I guess, solidifies, for lack of a better term, uh, back into its pose that it was in when it first got in here. Well... Quite curious. I expected you to do as Joker asked and steal the paintings, not destroy them. Did you even take a look at them to see what they represented? We just do the job. Well, you do it pitifully. I would never hire you for anything. Can't even take on a horse. Shameful, shameful. Which, hmm, she smiles and starts to stroke her chin, means that this next little trick up my sleeve, I don't believe you'll survive it. <laughs> she glares over at Snoopy. This one's for you, you mutt. And she starts to chant in her fingers, and uh, you watch as these, like, the swirling ball of light starts to float towards the painting over here. And as it do does, it's almost like a little, like a ghost orb in a way. Like, it passes through O'Shea, and O'Shea, you get this terrible chill down your spine as this little orb goes through you, and you're like... You feel like a sense of dread as it happens, um, but it immediately vanishes afterwards. And as you guys are watching this uh, globe of light, uh, you can use one of your turns, quote unquote, to rearrange yourself on the map if you wish. Um, I'm going to stay where I'm at in the air. Where did this orb go uh it's heading this direction that's that's the that's painting the he threw the gem right correct that's and then the it just suspended. The note. uh no this is the one with the note this is the one with the fancy dude yes do i recognize that fancy dude uh roll of perception A, B, C, D. There we go. 
No. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Um, can I take this opportunity to drink a health potion? Yeah, definitely. You guys can do essentially anything you could do in a round. Uh, you may do it now. Yeah, I'm prepping. I'm prepping two javelins then. I'm gonna. Do I want to use? Because I only, as a warlock, I only have two spells, right? Correct. Two spell slots. Yep. Okay. So Until you take a short rest. Four v forty four plus four, right? I believe so. You should have. I have you three superior. Sheet. You should be able to. Oh, I see. We didn't. Let me do this for you real quick. Superior potion of healing. Boom. Now you have uh, an actual item. Oh, that's called cool. the potion of healing. And now you should be able to uh, click the roll icon, and it should roll it. I don't think it'll apply the health, which I can do that super easy. So I'll let you go ahead and roll uh, the potion. Okay. You doing, cat? Six. Oh, eight d four plus eight. Holy shit! That's a good oh. potion. The uh, I have twelve of those. Ducked one of them, and then you're good. Tight. All right. Uh, so if everybody else is perfectly fine, let me do. Uh. Can I do something first? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I want to do my feet thing. Uh, I want to cast Doomsayer on Madam Willowwort. Okay. Nice. So it's 3D6. Where do I add the three? In front of the R, right? No. Oh, uh, yeah. Or no, no. Oh, I figured it out. Nope, that's not it. Should what? be able to. Oh, never mind. Uh oh. What's happening right now? And you're not within 30 feet of her, so you can't even do it. Unless you. Wait, move wait it's not 30 feet? feet? 25 feet in the air. Oh. I thought I was 20 feet in the air. Uh, either way, it's still too far. You'd have to move towards her. Uh, I'm good then. Never mind. I'll just hold my action. Or, like, not do anything. So as the little globule, uh, the little orb thing uh, gets to the painting, you can see it manifest. And then you see the gentleman on the other side, he blinks his eyes and he kind of like, he drops the glass of wine and it shatters and he kind of grabs his head and he looks out and he's like, what, <clears throat> what is that? He starts to walk forward and as he pushes his hand onto the, this, seemingly like invisible screen there's like this sort of shining of light as you can see him push his hand through and he starts to come out of the painting and as he does he drops onto the floor right in front of the painting what is this where am i who are all of you and as he looks at snoopy he gets this scowl Ooh. Why do I have the sense to kill you? Strahd, my dearest, these folks are your enemies, and that dog has killed poor dear Irene. Deal with them. These are your playthings. I have given this as a gift to you. <laughs> you... You will all pay!
And that's actually where we're going to end tonight's session. Yeah, that's not surprising. But this music, <laughs> though. Hold on, so, like, is this the real Shrod? Uh, from what you can tell, he... Well, actually, the only person that would notice would be Snoopy. And as Snoopy's looking at him now in the flesh and hearing his voice, he knows that this is Shrod, but he looks a much younger version. Okay. But it is Shrod, <laughs> though. Like, this is out of character. Yeah, out of character, that's Shrod. Okay, okay. I told you I'd bring him back to play. I was not done. I did not buy Curse of Strahd on Roll20 for no reason. <laughs> God damn it. Well, now um, I need to look at a journal entry real quick. Let's see. Actually, I was, it looks like I was wrong, but this is still good. Go under biography, and I put it under At the very appearance. bottom, under appearance. Oh uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing that, but then I, like I, that was one of the the like five ideas that I had, and I was like, you know, it'd be cool. I'll show pictures that have to do with the characters, and if they pick on pick up on it, that's cool. But the main thing would be the Strahd painting coming to life and fucking with y'all. So we had the staff one here. What Which uh, let me. I'll show you the actual, um, Kirsten, I saw you put some question marks when I described that, uh, character. Do you have a guess as to who that might be? I have an idea. Who do you think it is? Huh? Merfolk what's with you? the, the merfolk with the staff? Yeah. I'm assuming... Ursula. <laughs> oh. Ursula for real? <laughs> no, that's what <laughs> Joe said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, it can't be Cyrene because technically she's alive. Because I saw the it staff. Is it is Cyrene. Okay, because I saw the staff and I was like, that looks really familiar. But that, I that is the staff you didn't have. remember that the the staff had faces on it. I thought it was something else because it was it's a like druid. like a little totem pole kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so it is Cyrene. Okay. I know what's going on. I know what the paintings are from. Otto, can you show all the paintings? Uh, I mean, they don't have a picture per se, uh, especially this one up here. This one doesn't so have a... So uh, one of so... them is Cyrene. One of them is Hold Quinn on. and the other Let one. Me... Let me let me Quinn chill out Kai. on this music real Kai. quick. Kai, Kai, that was it. Yeah. Let's just Quinn let's Kai. just chill out. Let's just take it back. Right, like chill with the music. Let's let's just have everybody relax and we're all friends here. No one's gotta die, right? Gotta Are you playing serious music? I'm playing a a calm tune. Oh, it's weird because now that I'm using my headphones, the the noise or the music from Boundary's not coming through. Hey, uh, that you know happened what? to me too. Go to your sound settings. Hey, you, and, like, you click know on what? the. Uh, you want to do. Not stereo. Not stereo? What do you mean? Um, my. So when you phone... click. You go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead, Bree. I got uh, lost so. <laughs> So more than likely, you're talking about when you click the thing, like you gotta choose the default setting. Is that what you're talking about, Joe? Yeah, just like the sound bar, you can like click the up arrow there and there should be like all of your options for what your sound's coming through. Um, mine was on my headphones stereo and I switched it to the other option for headset audio. And yeah. On the music Definitely. note, or are you talking about like on your actual headphone Bluetooth yeah. setting? On your on yeah, the bottom Bluetooth right thing. of your, because you got a Windows computer, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. I remember that. So on the bottom right, where you see the little sound bar kind of thing, like the sound icon, if you click on that, it'll show you the volume 
and then above that you'll be able to select what your default device is and what he's saying is his headphones for whatever reason have two audio options one of them only gives him so much of the sound coming from his computer the other activates everything which is uh, common in a lot of uh, headphones that aren't designed very well, in my opinion. You know yeah, these make... are not a uh, gaming headset for sure. <laughs> you know what will make uh, our, Mine's our not potentially, gaming us potentially dying even more offensive is if you were to play Minecraft music while this fight was going on. Do that. <laughs> uh. We'll go, oh, I just realized I didn't give you a description of this painting down here, Joe. I do apologize. Uh, this painting down here is sort of like a tapestry. You can tell that it is it is a group of folks starting from the left, going all to the way to the right. And as you look at it closer, you see that the beginning group is this drow, a warforged, a puppy and uh, some dwarven barbarian dude and then you see that the group changes dynamics to two warforged a uh, werewolf a puppy and yeah I think that's where that group ended and then it keeps going essentially it is your party configuration every time it has changed all the way up until now where you see a puppy, a very pale uh, skinned woman, a uh, Aarakocra, a demon sort of creature that looks like a very beefed up tiefling, and uh, a small child, but his face is sort of contorted. So that's the first painting second painting is uh the one to the right uh and this is of Cyrene, which you guys haven't met her yet so curious as to why she's even there hmm. uh the next one is of course the beholder that uh you guys had just fought uh, i think the day before this one is the drawing that looks like it was done by a child it depicts a man and a woman together with their two uh, children. One of them is taller and has a ponytail. The other one is a little bit smaller by maybe like, you would think maybe a foot or so uh, in height at that time and has horns coming out of his head. Uh, the painting up at the top has a, uh, is a hand that has a note and it looks to be in the middle of either an ocean or a lake. Um, but the note has, you can only see the letters A, N on it. Uh, this one obviously is uh, exactly what Strahd looks like in this photo. Nobleman dressed really well, armed, and has a uh, glass of wine, maybe. You can't really tell. He looks like Keanu Reeves with short hair. Uh, if you look at the mirror, um, <clears throat> just saying. <laughs> Damn. This one Damn. right here, I don't think, uh, yeah, I didn't go over that one. So that one, you can see a king sitting on his throne, and he is surrounded by um, more than a dozen people. And the thing is, the more you look at their features, you can tell that they're all related in some way. Uh, and I'll say that Snoopy and Angelica, you guys notice one of them. Um, notice her. Ah. That hoe. That. You don't know who she be. <laughs> no, 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 I'm Sad out of character. <laughs> and then this one, oh, this one Heart. is a really large war golem with like a cannon strapped to its back, uh, seemingly destroying an Eladrin um, city. <laughs> Damn. Well, I don't know that, but <laughs> these are all events that have just been going on, or things that we've encountered. That's pretty cool. And of course, uh, 
Yeah. We'll see what happens next time. Whoa! Ho ho! Uh, yeah, let I'm me in my stream uh, real quick. <laughs> let me end my stream and I'll be right back. All right, so a nice little plot twist right there. I did like Snoopy's idea um, about how the art of them fighting the horse is the art show itself. Uh, that is a really, really cool thing because um, as they go to each painting, they see probably like the last action that took place and see that on the painting and they're like, what the fuck? Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. This is all, all the paintings are tied into the story of this party in some way, shape, or form. And um, I'm not going to go into detail. I might do it in one of my lore videos that I make. Uh, I might come back to like this session or something like that and uh, go over it. But yeah, all of these paintings are tied to the party in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so it's up to the party to figure out what exactly that is, if they even find it out. Uh, I guess we'll find out next time. So until we see you then, peace.